Welcome to the DVD about the history and structure of Black ASL. This DVD accompanies the book about the project. You should consult the DVD in addition to reading the book. The DVD and book are each comprised of nine chapters. Chapter 1 is an introduction to the project. Chapter 2 provides the socio-historical foundation as well as the history of schools for black deaf children. Chapter 3 specifies the methods used to conduct our research. Chapter 4 provides insight into the black deaf community's perceptions of language use, namely of black ASL. Chapters 5 through 8 offer linguistic analyses with the goal of identifying what black ASL is and classifying it as a distinct variety of ASL. People have long recognized the distinction in the way black deaf people sign. People have said when they watch black deaf people use sign language, they definitely notice a difference. As to my own experience, I first attended a school for black deaf children, then transferred to a school for white deaf children. I thought I signed fine until I got to the school for white deaf children. Then I noticed a difference in how they sign. My teachers and my classmates did not understand my way of signing. My teacher, a white woman who could hear and whose parents were deaf, asked me outright, what are you signing? I asked, what are you signing? It was then I realized how different my way of signing was. It left me feeling isolated, uncomfortable, so I made a conscious decision to stop my way of signing, to put my way of signing aside. One young black man who is not deaf commented that the language choices he uses when teaching ASL in the classroom and the way he uses sign language at home with his deaf parents are totally different. First, how do language varieties come about? There are two factors, geographic and social. Geographic factors occur when communities are separated and isolated from each other. This separation can be by rivers, mountains, or borders that are unable to be crossed, resulting in geographic isolation. Examples of social factors can include economic status, age, gender, race, and identity. For more than 50 years, linguists have studied African American English, and their research confirms that indeed it has its own unique structure. Indeed, we have many research questions to consider, such as, does Black ASL have similarities to African American English? What are the geographic and social factors that made it possible for Black ASL to arise? What do we think are the characteristics of Black ASL? Is producing signs with two hands rather than one hand, such as want, don't know, have, and young, a prominent feature of black ASL, not the ASL of white deaf people? For signs typically placed on the forehead, such as no, what for, why, or black, is this placement done more by black deaf people than white deaf people? Do black deaf people typically utilize a dramatically larger signing space than do white deaf people? Do black deaf people employ phrasal repetition more than white deaf people, like this repeated phrase, I'm leaving now? Do black deaf people take on roles to indicate various characters when relating dialogues more so than white deaf people? 
Do black deaf people make use of voiceless mouthing of English more so than white deaf people? Do black deaf people have ASL lexicon that differs from that of white deaf people? Do black deaf people incorporate black English lexicon into their way of signing? As I mentioned, there are a host of research questions to be considered. These are the ones we will address in this DVD. Enjoy!